Okay, everybody ready? <laughs> okay, everybody's ready now. Uh, this is just a quick presentation on Active Model, um, which you can use to make your objects work with Action Pack. That's what that is. Like things you put in your dishwasher. Uh, and, and Rails, that's, that's where all your helpers are, like URL helpers and stuff like that. Um, so when they rewrote Rails 3, they turned everything, or they tried to modularize everything. And Active Model is the result of making modules out of all the different bits and pieces from Active Record. So, uh, what? Why would you use it? You would use it to make a custom ORM if you don't like any of the ones that are out there. Um, you can make objects that work with built-in helpers, which is Action Pack. So I was just talking about. Um, give your objects validations, observers, stuff like that. That's a picture of a paper cat, a model that somebody built themselves. See, they built their own model, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so, like, I started using it because uh, I have a project on CouchDB, and there's a bunch of libraries for Rails for CouchDB, and I didn't like any of them. Um, so I looked, I started writing with this, and it was really easy. I think I made my own ORM for CouchDB in like a day. <clears throat> um, how does it work? It uses Ruby's include and extend to mix in only the things that you want. So you can uh, mix in attributes, um, validations, errors, all that stuff. That's a mixing board for mixing. Uh, okay, I'm going to show you some code, but it's not going to be live coding, so don't worry. Nothing's going to blow up. You can't see that very well. That's a, that's a picture from Lost. So everybody's going to be lost by the time I'm done. Do you want to pull that? <laughs> um, awesome. Why is it so blurry? Because you're an Emax. I can just do NX focus pre cached. Okay, um, so I've got uh, a couple different examples here. Um, I'm sure everybody can read this. So here's my files. I'm just going to show you some examples. Um, so at the end of my presentation, I've got links to the documentation for this. And you can look at the R docs for the gem, for the active model gem. And they have some really basic uh, sample code in there, then I don't think any of it works. Uh, the, there's better documentation if you go to the, um, let's see if I can do this here. Uh, hold on. Ah, oh, look at that. The, the actual Rails documentation website, this one that I'm sure everybody goes to all the time, um, has better documentation for this for using these um, it'll actually tell you like you know you need to require this before that and that kind of thing <clears throat> so anyway this is this is how you do this is the attributes one um, I made a uh, my class here blinker fluid and add some attributes name and amount um, this this sets up the um, like the method missing that rails uh, active record uses to do your, um, you know, to set your attributes on your models. So down at the bottom, I've got this little test where I just set the name and the amount. And when I run the test, uh, it looks like uh, that. See, there's the attributes at the bottom. It's really basic. Um, I'm sure even the beginners in here know know about that, but this. The main thing to look at here is that the class at the top, like I don't have to inherit from Active Record. So this is just a plain Ruby object that looks like Active Record stuff. You can do stuff with callbacks. Um, so this extends your class with callbacks. Um, you define your model callback methods. So you, this one just defines create, but you can do anything that you want, like create, update, delete, those things, um, 
So like at the bottom here, I'll, I'll make a new uh, snipe hunt and do create on it, and it will spit out snipe found there, which is actually in the, the my callback method here. If I'm hunting snipes, then you know that's the callback method. Um, so the next one is dirty attribute tracking, which I forget when that was added, but that, that's useful, right? Um, so it adds things like changed um, and then the attribute underscore changed methods for all of your attributes. Uh, so this one is, I just made a class called muffler bearing. Uh, so this includes active model dirty, uh, made myself a little little attribute method here. Um, so I named my attribute style. So you get things like style underscore changed, style will change, which you call if you're writing code to tell it that the value actually changed. Um, so you do some of the tracking yourself. So I can run the code here like that, and it says that style changed is true. So when I actually call the method, it says true, because I did change that one attribute. Um, what's next here? I've got errors. So if you like the uh, error thing, like you can do, you know, if you've got a model that has errors because it didn't validate, you do two sentence or something for your errors and your views. Um, this can add the same thing to your classes. So I made another class here called Canoe Valve. Uh, this uses extend active model naming. Um, and it uses this kind of silly thing. You make your errors um, in the initialize. You use you define a new errors object in your initializer. Uh, and then you can add to it just like you do an active record here on this line. Got in this case, we've got a, just say, setting a speed on your canooner valve. It cannot be more than one, or less than one. Um, this also includes naming. In one of the two sets of docs, it says you have to require the naming module for the errors module to work. So I included that, and I gave it a human attribute name here, which is kind of useless and silly which is perfect for a presentation. So I'll run the code. Before it validates, there's no errors. After it validates, it says speed cannot be zero. Looks just like active record stuff, but it's not. Um, next up is model name. This is not comprehensive, by the way. I'm just going through some, some of the most useful things. <coughs> this one just... Um, this one's actually pretty convenient because all you got to do is extend your class with the naming module and you get the model name method. It'll, it'll look at your class name for you and come up, come up with that. Um, so I will run that and you will see it will say that stuff at the bottom. It's just the same thing as printing out the string of your class. Observer, I didn't actually do anything with the code because I didn't feel like setting up crazy observation crap back and forth. Uh, but it looks just like normal observers you create within Rails. And then the last one is serializable that I've got here. Uh, the most common usages you'll probably want it for is to serialize your objects to JSON and to XML. So this is how you would do that. Um, there's another module called serialization that you can have your own custom serialization formats if you've got binary or whatever. Uh, you'd use that one. This is how you'd usually use it. Uh, so there's my little test at the bottom. Where I've got my classes, Fruity Pebbles. And when I make it, I will get these methods like to JSON, which everybody loves, as JSON to XML. So if I run the code down at the bottom there, <coughs> see? Wow. So the second one is the JSON that you'll see in browsers. And, or that's that's the what's that? It's not the JSON. 
that's as JSON to JSON back in here. XML. Everybody loves XML. There's a great book on XML over there, by the way, if anybody wants it. <laughs> awesome. Ooh, ooh. <clears throat> so, here's the links. I'll put up these slides somewhere. I'll let you guys use them. That was pretty fast and probably pretty boring for most of you. Any questions? I have one question on the errors one you were showing. Um, I know sometimes Active Record, or at least Rails, I'm not sure exactly where it is in the whole code base, does some curious things with initialize on models. So, like, do you know, does Active Model have the same sort of general <coughs> wariness of putting other code in initialize, or is it more of no, More this like the is the Ruby block side of things, or the Ruby side of things. No, these are all modules that you include. So you would extend or include them into your actual class. So your initializer is pretty much whatever you write. So there's no like there's no magical hooks on initialize like there are in, in at least the older versions of Rails. Three uh, may have decoupled it a little not bit. Not that I'm aware of. Well, in Rails, uh, your model inherits from Active Record Base, uh, right. and it yeah. has its own yeah. initialize that's, method. That's where it is, then. So, if you write your own without calling super, you're going to stomp on it and mess up lots of things. Yeah. So, you're not doing this plain old Ruby object. Well, I guess, but does, doesn't it also call initialize on both like new and find or something? And so, sometimes when you're finding a record, it gets it'll override fields and things like that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what did you say? You took you to write the uh, counter around like uh, a day or something? Yeah, I mean that wasn't, you know, like something I'd let NASA use or anything. But <laughs> it worked. It worked for me. Uh, I had some weird because the application is running in Smalltalk, so there's some silly things that. Who did that? I don't know. It was a terrible <laughs> choice. Whoever made that choice, I'd like to go shoot him. <laughs> go back in time. Shoot. Anyway. Um, I think that's that's a that's a pretty awesome thing. I mean, you guys are these all these things look really simple, but, but it's it's amazing like how much they actually give you and how much you can how quickly you can recreate something like Rails had. Like I I've, I've used it just a little bit, but it was when you said you know write your own ORM in a day. Like, that's really what it's like. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, and you know most of the stuff like MongoDB. Okay, there's stuff out there for it that you you're not going to use this. Um, you know CouchDB same same way, but like in my case, the, all the CouchDB ones will write your views for you. So they will go in and delete all your view code and then reinsert it. And I already had views that I wrote from the previous project and I didn't like them messing with my crap. So I, instead of packing them, I, I basically, the only thing I did was copy, um, I like the property definition, like data mapper style stuff. So I basically copied that code out of one of them into mine and then did the rest of this stuff, like the attributes and the model name and the validations using Active Model and cobbled together my own that worked great. So, yeah. This might be on the SHA mix side. From a performance standpoint, you know, it's pretty well known that Active Record is like not awesome. Yeah. Not something you want to instantiate just for giggles. Mm -hmm. uh, comparatively, <laughs> like just being able to include the parts that you need, mm -hmm. the performance way better. Or is it still just loaded up? Um, well, most of that active record performance is because Ruby is slow at creating objects. Like, it's just slow at that. Um, it is a little faster. I haven't done any benchmarking on it, so, because I didn't have much to compare it to. Um, My guess is from that initialized method, there's almost nothing there now. Yeah, so like, I, like, that, that way it doesn't rest, it was, you know, you could even make that faster, but that's got to be a lot faster. Because a lot of imagining, I was just curious if it was yeah, noticeable. A lot of that slowness is from making like, like all these associations use proxy objects that have multiple layers of internal proxy objects and reflection and all that crap. Um, so I'm sure, I mean, avoiding it's going to have to be faster. <coughs> well, it's in, and that gem too is such a nice change from Rails too because uh, it does a lot for you. But if you look at the code, it's actually fairly. I mean, it's, it's nicely written code and it's easy to get through and uh, make sense of it all. Yeah, each of these models or modules is, sorry, I don't like people messing with my computer. Um, <laughs> not even my kids. Uh, yeah, each of these modules is like a dozen lines of code. Yeah. And it's great to, um, 
you know, before Rails, if you wanted to read some active record code in Rails 2, you had to sit down with a couple cups of coffee and spend a whole day in there. And now they've broken it out so you can easily find what you want and read it and it <coughs> makes sense. All right. Thanks, David.